Welcome back to Ask a Dev. I'm DJ Karasak, and today's question comes from Whitney. She wants to know, how do you get started making Slack apps? Well, that's an excellent question, and it's a lot of fun and fairly easy to do as long as you understand some pretty basic concepts of making an API. The first thing you want to do is to create your own Slack team if you haven't already. This will give you a place to test your new cool bot or whatever you're making, as well as access to the API documentation so you can dig even deeper when you're ready. Once you've got that done, you'll want to create a little backend. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can use whatever you're comfortable with, Ruby, Python, Go, Java. I personally use JavaScript. I like the tools that it has with it. Uh, you have lots of tools for APIs, such as Restify and Express, but personally, I like HappyJS. So one thing to keep in mind is that Slack requires your endpoint URL to be behind HTTPS. So that means that you have to have a valid cert. You can't self-sign it. But I've been using Heroku to host mine, which gives you that for free, which is really nice. Just keep in mind with Heroku on the free plans, they tend to spin down. So if you have high response times every once in a while, it's just the server spinning back up. So once you get all that taken care of, there's quite a few things that you can do with it. The first most basic thing is creating an incoming webhook. This essentially just sends information to whatever Slack channel you want, and you can format it however you like as well. So for instance, if you want to remind your employees to submit their time for the day or send weather information if there's going to be some kind of inclement weather or something like that. A lot of cool things you can do, but if you want to get even more interactive, you have slash commands. The slash commands, it actually listens for whenever a user types your defined slash command and sends everything after that to your API for you to do whatever you wish. And then you can format the response back and display it to the user either publicly or privately. But if you want to get even fancier than that, you can have bots. The cool thing about bots is that they can listen to all the activity happening on Slack. So you can listen for keywords. Uh, you can create a bot user so that people can actually interact with the bot. To get started making your own bots, there's really cool tools like BotKit.js. It makes it really easy to jump in and start making your own Slack apps. And I really hope that you find this information useful and it gets you started making your own Slack integrations. And I can't wait to see what comes out of the community. That's it for this episode. Tweet your questions to Ask a Dev or leave them in the comments below.